Yes. Hi. Good morning, everybody. I'm Carmel. I am the head of education for Arojo, all three locations, and today we're going to have a little fun haircut. I believe this is our last day for our four-week Facebook Live, which has been fantastic. I mentioned it yesterday in my post. Um, we've had a lot of really great um, ambassadors. We've done some color, we've done some cuts, we've done some styling. So I think it's been really good that everybody's kind of put their foot forward and been wanting to play. So today is going to be the last day. Let me just get my comb. It's very hard to talk about hair when you don't have a comb in your hand. <laughs> I don't know why, but it is. Okay. So last time we were here, which I believe was, I don't know, 2018 or something like that? <laughs> I don't know what day it is. I don't is. know, it's someday, yesterday, that day, this day, we're not really sure. Um, okay, so we did something kind of mid-length, we did a little bit of uh, disconnection and then we did a square top. So what we're going to kind of play off that a little bit and do a little bit more of a shorter, beefier, so the length is going to come up really short. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a squirrel, I'm going to do the bottom with a scissor and then I'm going to do the top working from the front and I'm work, going to work around the head so it's going to be more of a curved feeling to it. So it's going to kind of have a little bit of roughness and a little bit of lightness. So I, I like to do that a lot on clients because sometimes clients when they feel their hair they like to feel that it's thick, you know, so if you like that feeling it's kind of a good way around it. So working from one of the hands from the last time that we did the class, it's again, it's going to be in this kind of, well, it's probably going to be a little bit shorter. I'm going to make it a bit beefier. So I'm going to work up as short as I can. I'm going to work to the mannequin's hairline. Um, they've got really ugly hairlines and I'm not really afraid, even on clients, to cut off the hairline. So we can discuss that and if you guys have any questions on that, you know, please ask so we can try and get as much information in the class. Um, and hers is square here, which is exactly what we did the last time. And this time we're going to do the complete opposite. So we're going to work in the front and we're going to work around the head. So it's going to be a little bit more like a round layer in the front and then a, a, a square layer in the back. Head sheet. It's fairly complicated, but it's really not that complicated. I think sometimes when you look at a head sheet, it's like, oh sweet mother of God, there's so many things going on. But, so everything here, everything's brought down so this is going to be your baseline or your outline or your length whatever terminology you use so i'm going to do with a scissor i'm going to do classic bob sections when i do a bob i tend to power through it really quickly i know a lot of people do not do that and they spend four hours doing it and then you have to spend another four hours fixing it when it's dry because there's so many different details that go into the game for me personally i like to go and i like to put in a a strong shape I still stick to the routine that I would normally do it and then when I dry it that's when I really allow my the details to come out I think it's very important to kind of understand what hair does when it's wet and then because it, it does something completely different when it's dry so it's really important to understand that and to allow the hair to move and have its own rhythm because once you detail it when it's dry that's when it's you know when it really kind of comes to life so all of your sections are going to be brought down you're going to be creating your length. You're going to work right above the occipital, but still below the crown. So mid head shape, right around the top of the ear, give or take. I think it'll be good for somebody with fine hair. It's also good for somebody with thick hair. It's going to flatten the back out and it's going to beef up the top. So the layering here, it's going to be square to the head. So again, the squareness, what it's going to do is it's going to flatten out the back, which is great. Um, and then working onto the side, the same thing. So this is the back of the head right here. This would be four, which would be equivalent to this. And then we've got our three, two, and our one. But we're gonna do differently instead of bringing everything back. The first three we're gonna bring back. This would be four, so three is gonna work into four. Two is going to work into three. And then one, instead of bringing it back to create the squareness on the back, I'm gonna curve it around the face. So what it's gonna do is gonna kind of open up the underneath here. We're still gonna to work to the length, now we can decide um, what we want to do with that at the end. I kind of thought of maybe rounding it off completely and maybe taking that corner off, but I'll see how it goes. And that's where the details come into the game and you can have a little bit of fun with it. I think it's good to have a, a rough plan and then you can kind of change as you go along. I'm a big believer in if you're driving a car and you're going to point A to point B and you've never been there before, what do you do? You get a map, AKA Google Maps. 
and it tells you exactly what to do. But this is the same kind of thing, yeah. right? It's this like is it's, our Google Maps. This is our this is Google Maps. <laughs> I wrote your maps. But it is important because you know it'll give you a couple of directions, a couple of different sets, and then you can decide which which one works for you. So this is kind of the same thought process. It's a it's a rough map of what you're doing, and then you can change it accordingly. Because sometimes when you put the corner in on the bottom, you're like, eh, I'm not really into it. Let me take it off. And that's what makes you creative, understanding the classics and then having a bit of fun with them. So we're going to cut out her front here. I'm going to use the same mannequin. I hate to be frugal with mannequins, or I need to be frugal with mannequins. You know, it's like, there's no point in doing just one haircut and then throwing her out. So we're going to use the same mannequin. So we're going to curve out the front. This is the fringe that we did. And you know what? We can change it and have a look at that. Um, and then on the top, it's going to work around the head. So we're going to be square to the head and then we're going to be round to the head. And we spoke the last time about body position. Body position is really important here as well. The back, everything is going to be brought to us, it's going to be square. Then we're going to start in the front and then we're going to work the way around, work our way around the head. And then the top is exactly the same as this. So each section goes to where it should be going, curving around the head, which will give it more of a round curved shape. This is the fringe on top. And then, you know, it, depending on how many sections we have left um, and how much openness of the blade, we can create a lot of texture. Okay, so uh, let's get to work. How are we doing? We're doing good. I see some of the Irish flags. Okay, so here we go with the Irish people. Irish people are my family. And the last time I... Uh, mentioned everybody, including the dog, and forgot the brother-in-law, and he was not happy. So, hi Kevin. <laughs> Sorry. I had, I had to do some major damage control. He was there being supportive, and there was me ignoring him. So, I think my mom is there, my sister, and the dog is probably watching also. Okay, so for our pattern, again, working from the top, Again, there's her fringe from the last time. She's not pandemic chic this time. Aww. I didn't, yeah, we, we downgraded her. So we're gonna take set, I already have the sections. So just straight around the head. Again, you can have this a little bit squarer or a little bit more curved depending on your personal choice. Um, for me, I think I say that word a lot, do I? Um, maybe I should stop doing that. <laughs> You're working, great. Working around the head. Doing great. Doing great. Okay. Okay. Focus. Working around the head. Um, with here, here I go again. Uh, with the mannequin head, it's very thick here, so I am going to work around the head a lot. And I'm going to work on to taking a lot of the bulk out of here because for some reason, the way they are made, the crown area is really dense. Okay. So, ball. This is a, one of my favorite shapes. I love a good ball. There's nothing better than watching somebody walk down the street with a really sexy ball. There's also nothing worse than walking down the street with somebody with a bad, ugly ball because it's a really ugly haircut if it's not done well. It's very systematic and it's just the same thing over and over and over and over. So I understand why people get annoyed with it and get frustrated, but once you do it and you master it, it looks really pretty. I'm going to power through this fairly swiftly, so no, it's a judgment-free zone, no judgment. <laughs> My, again, for the same reason, once you've done this and you layer it, because you're layering it flat to the head, the weight distribution shifts, okay? So if you go in, you spend an hour putting in this perfect line, the minute you layer that, it's already over because everything shifts, because you don't have as much weight pushing down to keep that line consistent, consistent the way you cut it. Um, it is a mannequin, so I have to take that into consideration. So her head, Nick, do something making all that noise. Nick. <laughs> Stop making so much noise! <laughs> no <Okay>. response. <laughs> no response. He just ignores me. Okay. Um, I'm going to do it in my comb because it's very hard to do it on um, rubber. So every single section I'm going to do here is exactly the same. Teeth straight in, attached to the skin, combed straight down. We're gonna cut. Next section, same thing. Boom, boom, all the way through. Everything is exactly the same. 
There's very little over direction on this. There's a very slight bit on the corner just to make sure that you keep the corner. A lot of the time people cut it square, but what you forget is that you're doing it on a round object. So the minute you move, you've now created a round bob, which is exactly what you do not want. You always want to have it at a very slight angle coming down just to maintain that corner. Okay, body position, square the head. Right behind her. I'm going to use the skinny side to come. Also, just FYI, I wouldn't use an expensive scissors. If you are playing around with a the mannequin, they kind of dull your scissors a lot. So if you've got a, a cheap scissors, I would definitely, I mean, I know no hairdressing scissors are cheap, but if you have one, maybe it's old, I would use that opposed to using a, a very expensive scissors because it really does do a lot of damage. Okay, so slight diagonal, I want to work right to her hairline. show must go on. You know we gotta get those packages sent. What did you say? I said the show must go on. We gotta get those packages sent. Yeah. She's like, gotta get the packages sent. Okay. Um, on the right side, I like to go down with my scissors opposed to coming up. It's definitely harder to do, but once you actually master it, it makes your job so much easier because your scissors is pointed in the same direction on both sides. So the weight of the scissors is a little bit easier for you to handle. Generally, if you come up the way, you, you will generally cut that corner. So you really wanna make sure if you are doing that, just be very present and make sure that you don't cut off your corner. Now I haven't seen any questions pop up yet, so I thought I would ask my own question. Okay. Go even on. though it's not. No questions. I'm What's not, up with that? I'm not. I haven't seen anything yet. Is that yet, any so real sleeping? Here I am. I want to ask my own question. Okay. I color, so maybe this is silly, but who knows? In a consultation, what would be some keywords that might pop out to you that this would be the technique or the concept that you would want to use? or like an inspo pick that you would see, what would be kind of something that would gravitate you to be like, oh, I want to use this technique on? Well, I think it really depends on the client's texture. Okay. Firstly, would be my, the first thing I would look at. You know, does she have a lot of hair? Does she still want to keep it in the mid-length family? You know, a lot of people don't really want short hair or long hair. They want kind of like that in-between in -between phase. And this is actually a good shape for that because it gets rid of all the stuff underneath, but then it'll still keep the stuff on top. You know, so they'll have something to play with. It's also fun to color, because you can keep the bottom dark or light and do something else with the top. Love it, thank yeah. you. So again, nice and consistent. Just look and see it again. Now, right around the ear area, it's not over directing back. A lot of people make that mistake, and then you get this like headiness working towards the front. You don't necessarily, there's no real need to do that. All you're really trying to accommodate is for the lack of hair around the hairline, because this part has the most amount of hair, and then this part has the little amount of hair. So you're really just trying to accommodate for that corner. So always just make sure you don't want to comb it down and cut it here, because you'll automatically go up, and you'll get your round bob. So all you're really doing is just combing it back into the exact same position as this section was. And again, keeping your comb, if you are working in your comb, keeping that slightly angled down towards her face. How's my sister today? She seems to be doing good. She's been sending some nice flags. Oh, and Kev says hi. Oh, there you go. I hope he's happy now. He won't be mad at me. Oh my god, I nearly died. I was mortified. <laughs> I felt so bad. There he was, wasting. He doesn't even do hair. <laughs> you know? And he was sitting there watching me. I was like, oh my god, the dog. <laughs> and my sister and my mother. So good. She said very good. Yeah. With lots of heart. Okay, so again, just putting in the basic shape. Now you can see it already, it looks like it's coming up because there's not as much hair under here. 
So this is where you always have to make sure. I mean, I know it's not because I know at this stage of the game my habits and what I do and what I don't do. Um, just always be aware too on a mannequin head, when you cut something to the hairline, it tends to bounce up a little bit here. So just be aware of that. It's not that you've cut it incorrectly, but there's definitely a little bit more bounce to that. You'll see a little bit of graduation. It's not technically done, but it is because of the way they, the mannequins are made. Okay, head position on her, head up, and then slightly tilt it over to the side. A lot of people do this incorrectly also. And what it does is, you know, so if you're cutting a client and your head is down and you do this really pretty ball, and then boom, she comes up and then you got to round, the corner is gone. So again, just always make sure that her head position is in a natural, natural state here and then you're just tilting her over. So it really just kind of like puts you in the right space. Then if you need to tweak it when you're done, you can do that and it's really easy. Ben said it's weird seeing you with shears, Carmel. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's weird using them. <laughs> All right. So same thing. Now, general rule of thumb, you know, you can't take the ear off, which is really unfortunate. Um, so there has to be a little bit of wiggle room. I'm not a big fan of overcompensating for the ear. Um, again, a lot of hair is going to be coming down on top of this, so. It's a lot of hair, it's all about the weight distribution, right? If, if we were cutting this really, really, really short on top, you know, kind of doing something in the very heavily layered bob, I might think differently, but there's gonna be so much hair coming down this that it's gonna push it back down. So again, it's a weight distribution, so it'll definitely hold it. I'm gonna start cutting some hair. Okay, so get to the ear, just do a little tap above, a little tap below, and just continue on. Same thing. What you do want to do though, is you want to do it for the whole section. Now I didn't pre-do her like we did the last time. Um, so I am going to blow dry her. I'm going to blow dry her pretty swiftly though. And I will um, iron her, opposed to going through the whole process with a blow dryer because that's like torture for everybody watching. So just cutting towards your line. Again, it's a little bit thicker in the front, so I don't want to stretch it too much. That's why I'm not using the wide side of the comb. Again, um, just giving a little bit of wiggle room. Anybody who's having any uh, volume problem, I think it might be because because we're using an iPad. I don't know if that has effect on volume or anything, but if you can just push your volume all the way up we uh everything is clear over here on our side so am i not talking loud enough maybe you could talk a little louder huh sure that might help okay is this better <laughs> <laughs> i'll start screaming and everybody like oh my god it's true. so on the other side exact same thing straight down we just want to work be very aware, like I said a few minutes ago, that your scissors, you wanna just make sure that you're combing it in the, in really in exactly the same position. Just working it right to here. Again, I'm gonna layer this, so I don't really care about this hair here. For time's sake, I'm just gonna cut it. On a client, that would probably take a little bit more time, but. Again, body position for her. Just gonna be aware. So head over. Now this is just a little bit of convenience for myself also. Just gonna take some of that hair out of the way. Just clip it in, clip it out of the way. Wouldn't it be great if you could just take their ear off, especially when you're doing this haircut? Be like, oh, here you go. I'll give it to you later. You can have this on your way out. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? How awesome would that be? It'd be so much less hassle. Although I think the ear at this stage of the game, considering what we're going through, is going it's to be uh, very important. least of our concerns. <laughs> also yeah. very important. It holds on to some of the yeah. masks. <laughs> so again, just tap above the ear, tap below the ear. 
We're being very consistent. Again, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over a bit of hair here and there. Again, once we layer it and we dry it, everything's going to change. Just giving a little bit of wiggle room. Now we're going to layer her. Are we moving on to the other part of the head sheet now? Yes. Okay. Okay, so the other is the word. The second part of the back of the head sheet. Let's go over here. Yeah. yeah. So we did our length, which would be right to about here. Also, same thing here. Now we're in this part of the haircut. So this is our section one. Second, we're gonna cut this flat to the head, straight out 90 degrees, cutting straight down to our line. So what it'll do is it'll flatten it out and it will automatically give it a little bit of graduation. It's more of a visual graduation than a technical graduation. I'm not gonna cut it with it in it, but it does it automatically because the head is round. So this is where the head kind of comes into play. So second section is going to go into one, third section is going to go into two, fourth section is going to go into three. And what that does is it makes it lean and skinny on the back of the head. So head position, just down a little bit. Okay. Center section, combing straight out. Now as you can see, if you guys just look at the bottom of my fingers here, I'm going to work to the existing length. Like this is my length right here, all the way down, and I'm gonna use this as my guide to go all the way up. So straight out from the head, 90 degrees, not dipping down. If I'm at a 45, I'm graduating it. That's gonna make it beefier, it's gonna make it thicker. I'm trying to avoid that, I want this like slick and lean to her head. Straight out, body position again, mine. Make sure that your feet and your body are right behind her and then you can just maneuver your body out of the way. I can't believe you have to go that far back today to see my whole body. <laughs> nice, clean, square shape. Just a little assess. I think it'll probably go a wee bit shorter. So again, straight out from the head. If you can't fit all of the section in your hand, don't sweat it. Better. Next section. So this is now two. So two gets brought to one. Straight out. 90 degrees. I'm not over directing it all the way in. I'm just placing it on top of number, number one. So number three. Now what I might do is I might just get one out of the way. So one would be here to here, and then two was here to here. So two came here. So sometimes I feel, and I know I do this, if I take all of this in one hand, I'll generally over direct everything towards that, which makes it heavier, which again is what I'm trying to avoid. So sometimes I'll just take one section out of the game. So third section, straight out, you can see your guide right there, just flatten it down, working all the way through to my length. So we have a question here. So are you directing back to the previous section? Yes, only to the previous, not any further. So this is section four. Section four is going into section three. A little moisture. So this would maybe be about five. On mannequin heads, for some odd reason, you tend to have so many more sections.
than you would on a client, unless she's got a really big head. All the way through. Again, keeping it nice and lean, nice and skinny. I also love the fact that Blaine can be right over my head. Josephine said that you have 49 inch legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a running joke in my family, just to give you guys a heads up. So, me and my sister are like five foot and like one inch. And she said to her husband one day something about, I don't, I don't even remember what the conversation was, but she asked him if she had 49 inch legs and he nearly collapsed. <laughs> like her whole body is like 49 inches. <laughs> Sorry, Jill Speed. <laughs> She's like, do you think I have 49 inch legs? <laughs> okay, so section six, again, very systematic, combing from the root, working all the way out, combing flat to the head. Body position doesn't really change. Everything is very much like this, which will automatically keep me square. If I drop down, I'm gonna drop everything, so I'm gonna start graduating. So it's very important to make sure where your body position is in relation to the head. Okay. So section 945. <laughs> I think we're at section six. Now here's where it changes just a little bit. Not necessarily this section, but the next one. What we're going to do is we're going to have to have a little bit more over direction. So let's say this is the next section is seven. So we're going to bring seven into like five and a half, five. Again, to accommodate for the lack of hair moving forward around the hairline. Um, if this was a client and she had a normal hairline, you wouldn't necessarily need to do that. You'll tend to do it more in the very front, but not necessarily in the back. But again, it all depends on your, you know, the goal that you're trying to achieve. Okay. So here, same thing, working all the way back. My idea, my eye, goes to here. I want to make sure that I'm not cutting the length. So if I'm down too far, I'm going to graduate, I'm going to work into this, the bottom section, and what that's going to do is it's going to create a hole. So I really want to make sure that I'm not going to do that. So again, up, straight out from the root, all the way back, I want to watch that length fall out. If it doesn't, just take it out. And then slowly, little bit at a time, work your way down to your section. So again, what you can see happening, you can see the flatness being created. But she's still got hair, right? So she'll still feel a little something in here. It won't be like gone. It's not about cutting, cutting it so short that she feels like she's got a massive undercut. Same thing. Now this is where I would definitely be aware, especially on a mannequin, because they've got literally no hair. So for us to keep that beefiness in the line, and I think we might have done this the last time, we could take a very, very thin slither of hair underneath and maybe just take that out of the game and tuck it behind her ear. It just gives us a bit of a safety net. I would prefer to have a safety net Mm -hmm. and be able to detail and cut it off if I need to later once it's dry or if it's too heavy as opposed to, oh crap, she's got a hole in her head because there's nothing I can do with that. Okay, let's go over to this side piece here. So we were on four and we're working into three. Now what I did here was kind of hard to do it visually. The third and fourth section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, instead of bringing it back to behind the ear, which I am going to do, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up and create a little bit more of a concave here. Again, just to kind of slim down the front and kind of create a little bit more texture. It's not something that you have to do, but it's something that can be a little bit more fun to oh do. Gosh, Nick is driving me crazy. <laughs> How do you tell your boss to stop making so much noise? <laughs> Oh my God, you're killing me. <laughs> Do I go and yell at him? 
Yes, yell at him. Okay, where should I position? Okay, you can just yell at him for her. Nick! You're killing me! <laughs> I think he's listening to like a podcast. I think he's, yeah. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna now change finger positions and I'm just gonna come above my fingers. Again, we left her a little bit of, uh, little bit of hair on the bottom, so we have a little bit of wiggle room right here. Same thing. Again, working back to behind the ear and then just rotating the hair up just a little bit. Again, it's just gonna make it a little bit slimmer. All the way back. Again, right to the back of the ear. The back of the ear is gonna work, give us a squareness. So, square here, corner, and then square here, corner, so they meet. Sometimes there might be a little bit of weight in the very back of the ear. If it is, that's fine. You can always go in when it's dry. I would definitely, ideally, do it when it's dry. It's much easier to see a little bit of hair than it is when it's wet. It looks much clumpier, so you'll tend to cut a lot more off. Now, in the front here, they have, the mannequins again, have a lot of hair in the front, but we had discussed that we're gonna comb that out. We're gonna cut that out. So again, there's our line, you can see it, our heaviness. So our fingers are gonna come right to it, and then just cut. So again, I'm gonna work this back, but I'm not overly concerned about it, because I'm gonna carve it out with a razor in the front but I wouldn't mind doing, just kind of creating the shape for now. Okay, let's see if we screw it up. Perfect. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes when you have to perform, you just don't, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, you know, when I would look at this, I'd be like, oh crap, I cut a hole in it. But here's the thing, the mannequin head, because of the hairline, when this dries, this is gonna come in shorter anyway. And I know, I can tell, because it's flipping forward. So you're, the naked eye or somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience will look at it and go, oh crap, I have a hole. And then they cut this shorter. And then it's this cat and mouse game and you're trying to figure it out. And the truth of the matter is, is that when you pull it down, you actually don't have a hole. It's all the way through. That line is nice and clean. It's also something that happens a lot when you blow dry hair. People do this, they make this mistake all day long, especially on this haircut. They blow dry it, the back looks great, it's nice and clean, they get to the side, they blow dry it, and they blow dry it going forward towards your face, so it curves it up. So it also makes it look like you've got a roundness to it. You know, so it's really important when you're blow drying a bob is to kind of bring it down a little bit more, just very slightly or directly back. Because most people dry it straight down and then it automatically curves forward. So just a, it's a big detail, but it's really important to kind of keep that in your mind. Okay, second side, same thing. Now for ease, I'm gonna flip over my fingers. It's not always easiest to do this, but I'm gonna do it just for camera sake. No, I think it's better if you stay inside, okay. maybe, yeah. Is that better? Yeah. Actually, is it or is it not? Which is better? You guys tell me. We'll go with this way. This feels pretty good. Yeah, this feels pretty good. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. I think we can. This looks good. Okay. Yeah, that feels good. This, for people that are right handed, you really have to make sure that your elbow is high. The minute you drop this down, it's over. Right? So you're going to have two sides that are going to be completely different. So it's palm to palm, straight out from the root. Again, my eye goes to the length. When I go to here, I will flip and go over the fingers because it's just easier for me. If you're tall, you might have a little bit more wiggle room. Working all the way through each section, go into your previous. I know. We didn't turn the EC on because it makes a lot of noise, so we didn't think you would uh, be able to hear us. 
but we got Nick anyway. They're like, I'm going to be melting in like five minutes. And we have Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Packaging. You can hear him panting. He's like, <laughs> So, what happens here generally is people are like, I can't do this because your body is in the way. So, what you want to do, if you ever encounter that, it happens a lot. What you need to do is you need to get your mid part of your body and you just need to move it out of the way. Did all the light bulbs just go off in everybody's head? I don't know. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, ding. Happens a lot. People are like, hairdressers are like this. And you're like, oh, I can't get at it. I can't move. I can't do this. And it's like, all you have to do is like, open up your body, get yourself out of the way, and allow yourself to get in and to do the hair. You just have to twerk it back, Carmel. That's basically what you're saying. That's basically it. <laughs> a nice clean shape. You see how it's starting to look slightly graduated, even though it's not technically cut that way? Again, because the roundness of the head. So this is where it keeps it very pretty and very sexy on a woman. It's not flat like a man's square shape. It has that curve to it. Okay. Working the last section now. Right around the back here. I'm going to over direct again. This time I'm going to flip my fingers. It's too hard for me to do it the other way. So, again, looking at the bottom, I need to make sure that that length is coming right out. And then I'm going to work up. I can always work back down just to make sure. Just in case there's a little bit of nether. You know, you might get that little tiny bit of hair. It's not a whole lot, but it might make that little bit of a difference. That's why they pay you the big bucks. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Okay, now let's do the same as the other side. This gym is too much hair there. Just take a sliver of hair. I'm just going to we'll comb it right behind the ear. Don't get cut up with it too much. It's kind of, oh my God, I'm saying that and I'm doing the exact opposite. <laughs> Okay, so there's our section. So working forward, I'm going to bring it back. Can't see my section, it's too dark. Here we go. So again, lifting right up, body position. Still can't see my guide. See, even the pros screw it up. Here we go. There's our guide right here. So again, making sure that this hair comes out of the game. Any questions? No, nothing so far. Everybody's being exceptionally quiet. Teenagers. I think Nula's on. Hi Nula. Again, all the way through. Again, I have that little bit of a buffer underneath, so I'm not overly concerned. You know, as you're working towards the face, the hair that's coming off is a lot less because you keep over directing it. So now we're down to a little, little nugget. And then we have our little bit of a buffer underneath. Okay. So that's the back and the sides. Okay. So I'll do a quick cross check. It's a cross check. It's not a cross recut. So you don't want to cut it. If there's more than like a sixteenth of an inch, it's really not ideal. You want to take it in the same format. So we worked this way. Now we're just going to work up the head. But that doesn't mean you take it and you cut it down, or you, you check. You don't check at a 45, you check at a 90. So it's again, straight out. So you're in the exact same position, you're just coming at it from a different perspective. So we're gonna work up and just see, like these things here, you know, it's a very small amount of hair. But what it does is it just kind of really makes sure that you tie everything together really quickly 
It also, you know, allows you to see if there's any inconsistencies, which is really what it's ideal for. Like right there, right? You see that? <laughs> yeah. She gives me a headbutt. I banged you in the head. <laughs> so, I mean, I left it it's a little bit heavier here. So all I have to do is just really quickly go back in and just work that down. And it's right here. So what I did was, just so you guys know, I must have dropped my hand just a little bit. So I wasn't like dead, dead square. I must have like given it a little bit more leeway on the way down. So I'm just gonna come back in. It's right there. Not a lot of hair, but it's enough. So we have a question. Hi, are you layering the parallel to the ground, the side? Yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay, top. Yay. Yay, how are we doing on time? Ooh. Pretty good, huh? Not really. We're at the top. Yeah. We're at the top of the, the climb I want, here. I wanted to dry her so we could see her. Maybe I will. We, might yeah, we could always just do a dry and then just post the after photos. Yeah, that's true. If you want. Or I can just stop talking and hurry up. <laughs> that's also an option. All right. So. Yeah. If we can pop over it. here. Now we're on the top panel here, okay? So each section now we're going to work our way around the head. First panel is going to be brought down to our line. We can decide where that's going to be. Do we want to maybe leave it longer than the length that we've cut underneath? That's a possibility. That might be cute. Um, I think that would be really cute if she had curly hair. You could flatten the shape out of the back, drop the top, keep it longer so it has a little bit more of an expansion. That would also work. And the key here, and here is that you have to work all the way around so you're not staying in one position each time you take a section you move so it's kind of like a shimmy around the head we'd always talked about like working behind the head and working square to the head and now what we're going to do is we're going to work our body around it just makes it so much easier when you're doing a round shape to move around the head so i'm going to take a curved section I have my razor ready to rock and roll. Let's see, do I have another? We hair? have another question. Why wouldn't you just take off extra hair in the cross check? There's no need to take off extra hair. If you do it right the first time, all you're really doing is dusting it. That's the idea of the consistency and about of the classics. If you don't understand the classics, that's when you start doing having to do more haircuts. The idea is to get it right the first time and then tweak it at the end if you need. If you keep cutting it, you're, you end up spending like an hour and a half doing a haircut because you, you're trying to fix it all the time. So there's no real need for that. You're better off spending time mastering the technique and mastering the, the, the classic shapes than to do four haircuts. I don't want to do four haircuts on anybody. Yeah. I like to get in, I like to do a strong haircut, I like to do the blow dry. Detail it and peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Good luck. Bye. Okay. So, our line is underneath. We're right here. We can decide that in a second. So, right now, what I'm going to do is going to work some of that down. Okay. So, now I can decide this is my first panel. Or are you over me? I am 100% okay. over you. Great. Okay. So, I'm going to work to my length right now. So again, air before hair. I'm working around. Stop, drop the hair, take up the next section. Shimmy your body over. Can you just do that? Shimmy real quick. So we start here, first section. Second section, shimmy. Great. Third section, shimmy. Great. And what you're doing is you're working around the head so it automatically puts you in the right spot. If I stay here on a round shape, I'm gonna bring everything to me because it's easier. So I'm gonna have a lot of heaviness in the back. I'm not really trying to achieve that. So again, I'm, and I'm also not trying to follow the guide from the underneath. I'm trying to start a new one. So whatever you see is going on the bottom, you're basically just gonna ignore it. 
again shimmy around. What you'll also notice is I'm dipping just a little bit and I'm opening the razor because I really want to create a lot of texture and then dropping down just a little bit more. I don't mind if some of this hair kind of hangs over the undercut that we've already created because you get the beefiness and then you get the light airiness too. Okay. Okay. Next section. So curved section around the head. She's a little wobbly for me, so let's stabilize her. Here's our hair cut underneath. Now I'm gonna elevate this just a little bit. If I keep it down and I keep a closed blade, it's gonna be really heavy on top. I wanna to kind of lighten up the shape a little bit. So I'm gonna, using the skinny side of the comb, coming straight down and then really opening up the blade. What you really want to do is you want to stay on the hair and try to hit every single piece of hair. Using a razor is really, uh, it's like a signature. Everybody does it a little bit differently. The bases are always the same, how you handle it, how you open it, how you put in your razor. But when it comes to actually using the tool, everybody's a little bit different. I would normally consider myself a fairly uh, heavy-handed person and I feel with this you really have to lighten up the load a bit, which is good. Now again, as you can see, right around the crown area, they've got a lot of thick hair, so we can definitely go in and take, out of that, take the bulk out of there. Because you can see it already, it's just like dense. So open, 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 open. Normally I would say once you get to the top of the hair, close it down a little bit, close the blade down, use more of a closed blade just so it has a little bit more weight to it, just on that very front, the very top section. But with her hair, you're so dense in here, you can really kind of go to town on it. And honestly, it's a mannequin. Especially if you're learning, it's a great way to learn because if you screw it up, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> she doesn't care. You paid her, just remember <laughs> that. And they're expensive, yeah? So if you're gonna get a mannequin, make sure that you do maybe like the classics, right? So I would go onto the Erosia website and um, the, oh my God, the subscription. And what it is, is it'll give you all of the classics and then you can work your way through all of the classics with one mannequin head. So you'll be able to get long lair, you'll be able to get bobs, um, scissor bob, graduated razor bob, I'm sorry, scissor bob, god I just went blank. It's okay. Scissor bob, scissor lair bob, scissor graduated bob. You're working and talking and we're doing, doing great. great. <laughs> doing great. Okay. It's like chewing and walking. Right? Can you chew and walk? I'm like, I'm a woman, of course we can do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so next section. Sorry, next side. There we go. Where is that? Okay. So again, a little bit of my, I'm going to keep the elevation a little bit lower here, just on the first section. I can remove the weight by the openness of the blade. I do want to keep the length to cover what we've done underneath here. If I lift it up too high and then I open the blade, she's going to have no hair here. So I really want to make sure that we've got, I don't want a whole lot of length there, but I definitely want something to kind of fall over it. So second section, going to have a little shimmy. So working my way around. Again, consistency in the razor is really important. So working my way through, I might run out of hair. Now also on your left hand, 
with the razor, don't hold the hair too, too, too tight. Give it a little, place it in your fingers, but don't hold it too tight. If you hold it too tight, when the razor hits it, it kind of like hits it very heavily. Where if you relax the tension on your left hand, it really kind of allows the, the razor to kind of flow through the haircut. It's a little bit easier. It's also easier on your hands. When you start razoring, you'll generally be, on your fingers, you tend to get a lot of cramping because you're kind of holding onto the hair so tight because you're afraid of your life that you're going to lose it. Or cut yourself or, or whatever. Yeah, there's a whole slew of things that could, that could go wrong, you know? So I understand why people do it, but it's very counterproductive. So if you can get used to not holding the hair so tight, it really allows you to get the razor through the hair a little bit easier. So we just have a question here. Would you tell your client how to blow dry it at home the way you describe, directing from the front back instead of straight down? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think a part of our service is educating your client. You know, if you do a haircut and she doesn't know how to do it, then you've done a shitty haircut. She doesn't know that it's a great haircut, she just knows that she can't handle it. So it's really important to educate your client. It's important to educate her on what to use. You know, is she using, you know, store-bought detergent for her hair? Is she after spending $400 on her color? and now she's gonna strip it when she gets home because she's using a cheap shampoo. You know, I would be really frustrated if I was a client and I spent a lot of money on a product, whether it's color or cut, and I didn't know how to deal with it at home. So for me, when I deal with, um, when I do my clients, I'll get my products, I'll put them on the station, and I'll show them exactly how much I'm using. Some of them take a video so they have a concept because some people just aren't good. That's a great idea yeah. to have your client like video yeah. the steps. I'm like, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm gonna use this first, I'm gonna use this second. Sometimes we cocktail them, which is mixing them together, which is definitely a, a fun thing to do. It's not necessary, but you know, some people just like it. Is there anything else you would tell her to do with this cut? As in? I'm, I'm guessing, is there anything else you would tell her to do with this cut, as in like anything in particular for this cut that styling would require? I would tell her to go to Blaine and have her color done. <laughs> Thank so you. just made Blaine some money. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I mean, you know, again, it's a complete image, right? If you do this haircut on somebody with really dark hair, you know, it might look a little heavy. Maybe if you send her up to the color department, you know, and they put in some fun painting pieces, it's going to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more interesting, you know. So it also that also keeps the client a little bit more within the Arroyo brand or whatever your brand is, whatever company you work for, you know. So the client feels that she's taken care of top to bottom. But I would teach her. I would teach her how to do it wavy if she has texture. I would also teach her how to do it straight. Now I'm not a huge fan of spending 15 hours blow drying hair. I prefer to just kind of power through it and then you just get a flat iron, you know? If that's how they're gonna do it. I don't think clients are gonna sit there for 45 minutes and blow dry their own hair. I know, well, let me rephrase that. My clients won't do that, ever. They were like, I need, I got eight minutes. So I have to come up with a haircut that's pretty and that they can do themselves in eight minutes. And I think it's important because I don't want to spend two hours doing my hair. I don't. Right. So, you know, how do they prep? I'm a big believer in prepping. So you get into the morning, you know, you get into the shower in the morning, wash your hair, come out. Like I comb my hair flat to my head. And then I go about my morning and then it's pretty much done. I might need to blast it really quickly for a couple of seconds here and there. But, and I teach my clients how to do that and they love that. So it's really important to kind of give them a little bit more education. I'm going to change the parting on her because this is not cute for the center part. I really enjoy how this is looking. Like I really love this. You see, here's the fun now, right? Like center section, kind of dorky, right? I mean, it could work. Totally. Totally. For me personally, I would hate it. So. Now you've got your shape in, your general shape, what are you going to do with it? Now we're going to destroy it, <laughs> is what we're going to do. So you can kind of come around and kind of 
see what's happening. Now what we didn't do is we didn't do our piece underneath, right? That's why it's really heavy here, right? You can kind of see that. Right. Yeah. So we're going to come under. I'm just going to take that section out. It's way too thick. Just come back in. Okay. Tilt her away from you. This is where your hands become really important. Because if she moves, you've given her a nose job. Let's see how difficult this will be. Yeah, it's like a whole new, it's a whole new learning world. curve. So thanks to my sister and her friend Pauline for my masks. They made them and shipped them from Ireland. I would say this is pandemic chic. It is now. Yeah. Isn't she cute? Look at her. All right. So I think we'll go from the bang area, the fringe area, and work our way down to the line. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my fingers way away from the line and I'm just really going to open up that blade and take all of that hair out. Okay, well it's definitely not as bad as I thought it was going to be with her having a mask. Cool. So that's good. All the way through. They have a lot of hair on the front of their head, mannequins. So I'm really not intimidated by the amount of hair. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> Live video, John. Thanks. <laughs> Screaming in the background. Screaming, yeah. All right. So now, this is where you can have a bit of fun. Maybe we could take this out. So again, fingers, keep your fingers straight. Generally what I'll do is I'll maybe put my ring finger on her face just for a buffer. If she's a wiggly person, you know those kinds of just like Or she's talking around. a lot. Oh yeah. Tell her to stop. <laughs> and I will say it just like that. Just be like, listen, I have a really sharp blade. I'm gonna be working really close to your face, just keep your head still. Yeah. And they were like, why? And I'm like, because I'm gonna give you a nose job if you don't. And then they're like, oh, okay. So you have to make it important to make sure that they understand. Yeah. Why. Again, working. Now I'm just going to work all the way down, sliding my fingers as I work towards her face or her chin. All the way through, all the way through, all the way through. Move it around a little bit. See how it's looking. We still have our corner. Awesome. God, don't you hate when you cut the corner off? But I am going to lighten it. Okay, let's see how this is looking. Better? Yeah. You see, you can see it from the other side, right? Do you want to maybe come from the back? Mm -hmm. You know, you've got a cute little thing going on here. You can see her cheekbone, which is obviously yeah, ideal to get that hair out of the way. And you can see here that it's just heavy. So the concept is a good idea. It doesn't always work, and that's when you can change it and detail it at the end. So let's just do the same thing on the other side. Ooh, 12 o'clock. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I know we can go a few minutes over, so I'm not sweating. But what I think we'll do is I'll dry her and then we'll uh, post a photo. Cute. Good lord, that hour went really quick. Time flies when you're having fun. That's right, baby. So again, working all the way to the corner. You can over direct this here if you wish, working from the fringe area. Open blade, see all the bulk that I'm taking out? So I'm coming down to my fingers, so I'm still keeping a lot of that length here, but I'm getting rid of all of that bulk in the interior. Good Lord. I hope you guys can't hear that. You think they can hear it? I don't think so. I don't I think so. So again, last section. Open, 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 open. 
what you don't want to do is you, you don't want to mow through it. You know, all your region is creating a rough line, which really defeats the purpose because you could just do that with the scissors. With the scissors. So, let's bring her back up and see her. See, for me, I would just want to freehand it now. Just a little bit of weight. She's cute. She is cute. So I just come in, take some pieces out. But you know, the strength of the shape has been put in there. Now what you're doing is you're detailing. Like if you were to, uh, you know, use a thinning shears or if you were to texturize. But what it does is it allows you to kind of create so much more. This is the part that I think the clients also like to see the most too. Oh yeah, but like, this is when it comes alive, yeah. right? It's like otherwise it's just another basic boring haircut. Um, we had a question, are you using the end of the blade? I'm using the tip of the blade. So probably the first quarter inch. Okay. And really because it's, I'm so close to her face, you know, I can get the heel of the blade away from her and then just wiggle it down. And then if it's heavy, you can also come in, because we'd already cut her bangs, you know, you can go in and chop up some of these and make it a little bit rougher. You know, because sometimes you don't want it to be pretty. You right. want it to be a little bit. She's an edgy gal. She is. She's in Soho. She's like, let me be a little bit of a rebel. A little bit of weight here. So just go in and tip out a little bit. Tipping is like just coming in with the tip of your scissors, light on the pressure on both hands, and I really just kind of like tickling the hair. So it just, excuse me, gets rid of some of the density and some of the bulk. So I put those down. Let's have a quick look at her. I don't know if I'd blow dry her straight, actually. I know. Initially, I had thought I wanted to see it, but I think it's, we created so much texture in it. It's like bringing out. Yeah, I'm like, I don't really think I want to, I know there's definitely something I need to do back here, so let me just have a quick peek. Because you can see the heaviness right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you could do one of two things. You can either come in and just bring this right down to your line and work through it. So it sits over it, so it has a little bit of weight. But because of the crown area here on the mannequin, I'm gonna take it on the diagonal just a little bit, because you can see it right here. It's just like heavy, heavy, heavy. So I'm gonna work up the way and just slim it down. I mean, I could cut this piece of hair until next Wednesday and there'd be still a hair on her head, so I can't sweat it. And you would never really come into this situation with a client. A lot, that's also where I would feel like sometimes people have that, have a little bit more thinning going on in that crown area as well. Absolutely. Especially a little cowlick situation going on too. So again, I feel like I want to kind of open up her, see a little bit more skin in there. Especially again, if their hair is dark, you know, and if they're light skinned or whatever, you want to just make sure that you can have some of the skin popping out because I think it's really important to keep it pretty and to keep it kind of sexy on a woman. If it's very heavy, it looks very bowly, which is definitely not the goal. Nothing so, wrong with a nice bowl, but not what we're doing today. <laughs> nothing wrong. I love a good bowl, but my God, it has to be on the right person. <laughs> Or just someone who has the confidence where you're like, whoa, you yeah. can rock this. And there's really not that many people. Right. You know, it's like a good graduate of Bob. You know? Like, there's probably 10 people on the planet that can wear a really great Bob or graduate of Bob. They're generally not very attractive on most people. So, again, just tipping out some of that weight. You can see it just kind of allows it to have a little bit more. God, her hair 
as dark as mine. Yeah, but this is also too when you can send it up to a colorist and be like, do this, you yeah. know, do something. And then she comes down for maybe the blow dry afterwards. So what I'm going to do here, because it's so dark in the front, I'm just going to take some of the pieces out. But instead of just doing here, I'm going to come up and I'm going to really slim this down. So you can go in and take very heavy slithers of hair out and then let it fall over it. And you can kind of see that it really releases that a lot more. She okay, I think I could probably cut her for like a week. Yeah. So let's see what we're going to use on her. I'm going to do five minutes and we're out. Promotion. Here we go. Promo. <laughs> wow. Now, this is kind of like, a, it's a cream-based product, obviously, but it kind of dissipates into your hand, but it has a little bit of hold to it. So I wouldn't kind of think of it like gel, but it does have a little bit more oomph to it than some of our products, which is really nice. I love it for short women's hair or men's hair. Um, I used to use it on mine when my, my hair was a lot shorter, so it's great to, if you wash your hair at night, put it on and sleep in it. Mm. If you sleep in it, it kind of does this weird texture thing to your hair the next day, which is pretty good. Okay. This looks cute. Yeah, so let's give her a little twirl around. So you can see her from the profile too. So you still have a nice clean shape underneath, and then you've got the texture on the top. Same thing here. Now, if this was to dry, for some reason the mannequin heads always jump up. So I would be definitely taking the back of that hairline off. But again, I would do it fairly roughly. And if she's got a crazy hairline, don't be afraid to cut it. When in doubt, cut it out. I'm kidding. <laughs> She's got tricks. Got tricks. But I just don't believe in being like, oh, I can't do this because of that little bit of whatever in the back. If the, whatever is in the back, just take it off. You know, because you can literally come in and take out anybody's hairline. Okay, this is extreme. I get it but it can be done. Yeah, that looks so nice. And it just makes it a little bit softer and a little bit airier. So don't be afraid of doing that if that's... Would if that, that be something you would tell your client you're doing? Or just, this is your thing? You if I've never done her hair before, I would, yeah. Just so she knows. Cool. If it's a regular client, no. Because my clients don't, so I just I'll cool. do what I want anyway. But I, if, it's in reg, if it's a new client, I'll explain to them what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. Right. And then they'll be like, oh, I don't know about that. And I'm like, okay, so or we can try a little, and then next time maybe we can do a bit more. Cool. Yeah. So, here we are. What's her name? Beatrice. Ooh, sassy. Sassy. Okay, so this is Beatrice. Let's take her. Yeah, you can see just taking all that really opens up the face and allows you to have her be a little cuter. Huh. No. Cute. Okay, so. Oof, gross. Okay, never thought about the hair inside. Oh wow, clients are gonna be. Oh, interesting. Shit, God, that's gonna be horrible. Can we come up with a better plan? I wonder what, I, I mean, honestly. Yeah? These are things, these are like learning curves everyone's gonna be facing, you know? Here yeah, soon. I mean, that's gonna be tough because if that's, if you're covered in hair all day from a stylist perspective, I mean, you might need 15 masks or 10 masks. I, I mean, I'm also talking about the client. Yeah. Like the, the service is a bit 
even more uncomfortable because you might be getting little bits and pieces of it. Yeah, I mean, it is possible. If anybody has any to... tips, I think that would be a nice thing to share on a post yeah. or something that what they've been doing for their clients or has it even been a bother, you know? Yeah, I never thought of that. All right, so let's have a really quick recap because we're way over. So everything down to our line, bob length, layers in the back, brought into your previous top section, probably below the crown, but above the occipital, right above the ear area. Top section, curved around, each section brought to you, and that means you move around the head all the way through. So same thing here. This, it's not a pivot, it's section one. Section two, move. Section three, move. Section four, move. Section five, move. Section six, move. So you keep a consistent shape all the way around the head. So the back is flat, square to the head, and the top is um, curved round. Okay, I'm so. gonna just bring this real quick up. Yeah. So if you wanna take a screenshot, I would go ahead and do one, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Okay guys, so we just wanna say from the Erosia family, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your home for the last four weeks. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. We had a lot of fun doing it. I know Nick is out there packing boxes, which he's been doing. So we're just gonna let him keep packing boxes. We fed him, we watered him, he's fine. Um, if there is any questions regarding this haircut, um, please just you know throw something into the comment box and we can answer it for you. And I just wish everybody safety and happiness and all the good stuff in life. Yeah. So have a, and listen, get a mannequin, get on the subscription and work your way through it. My advice would be get two mannequins. The longer hair, the better. Do two long layers, two round layers, two bobs, two layered bobs, two graduated bobs. Just do smaller versions. Don't cut four inches off. Just maybe do a half an inch or an inch and just go through the process. And then once you've learned it with a scissor, then get your other mannequin and do the exact same haircuts with a razor. And that's where the practice will come in, so it would be really great for you guys. Okay, thank you from the Eurasia family. Bye. Bye.